Stage seven of the Vuelta a España would take place in Andalusia and take the riders north from Archidona in Malaga all the way to Córdoba. Once the capital of Al-Andalus and the empire centuries ago, this was the capital of the Vuelta and a big ride home to the finish. There will be one big obstacle to take on. That would come 40 kilometers from the finish, a climb out of the city, the Alto del 14%, taken on by the brand new leader of the race, Ben O'Connor and the rest of the peloton. The first time in 15 years and just the fifth time ever that Decathlon had led a Grand Tour. No supermarket starts on this occasion, a more traditional day with just the one rider out the front, Xavier Isasa, for the second time in his short Vuelta career in a breakaway. It was another hot one, temperatures up to 38 degrees Celsius in the Andalusian sun. Degadlon were happy to have Ben O'Connor, the Australian in red, and they were happy that two other teams were controlling the day. Eight and a half minutes, the maximum advantage for the Basque rider from El Scaltel, controlled by Alpacin de Koenig and Visma Lisabite. Would it be Groves versus Fanart? Could both of them hang on over the final climb? We were waiting to see. Not too much happening on the road until we got to the outskirts of Córdoba. Beautiful city towards the north of Andalusia. And it got very, very quick as we came through the wide boulevards. Intermediate sprint was taken by Sasat, but then he would be caught. And straight after that, Red Bull Bora Hanskra going to work. Afeni would do his best to try and control as well. But as the slopes got higher, and as we got closer to the top of a climb that would give us bonus seconds, Red Bull Bora Hanskra already trying to set off in search of chipping away of the near five-minute advantage that Ben O'Connor had. There were surprises and victims out the back. Several big-name riders dropped, including Ertebrooks and Ahrensman, the latter seemingly suffering with the heat. Over the top, the bonus seconds had been taken by Roglic. He was there to out-sprint Kuss, and just behind him, Richard Carapaz. Embrick Mas missing out on those couple of seconds. Then this happened. A look around from Groves, a touch of wheel in front with Naido Quintana. This group already just off the back, Groves hitting the deck. He would not be getting back. Then some undulating terrain, 22 kilometers from the finish. And it was at this point that Matsulair tried his luck. Wart van Aert, the only main sprinter to have made it into this group. The rest mainly GC riders. Soler trying to take advantage of a little bit of hesitation. And take advantage he would. He'd get the gap out to well over 20 seconds. Decathlon would ride. Sepp Kuss would do his best, the only teammate left for Wart van Aert. And other riders would be looking to try and take advantage as there was a descent to come before the flat final 10 kilometers. Soler was still out in front. Already a winner of two Vuelta stages in his career. But no victory in two years. Soler thought it was the moment. The gap had been coming back, and when it was at 15 seconds, Fanart himself decided to go out on the attack to try and close it down. He'd be brought back, though. The gap was then at 11 seconds. Kuss kept the chase going. Nine and a half kilometers to the line. Soler still with a chance to win the stage. But he was tiring. He was hurting. The legs were screaming. Matt Soler of UAE just about caught with just under four kilometers to go with Sepp Kuss riding his heart out. The Vuelta champion trying to set up his mate for the sprint. But there was a counter-attack. Pavel Sivakov giving it a go for UAE and he would take the riders under the Flamme Rouge. Alex Vlasov trying to pull things back and give Primoz Roglic more of a chance. But on Vlasov's wheel, ready to pounce, was Van Aert. 500 meters to go though and it hadn't been brought back. Was this to be a brilliant win for the Frenchman in a Grand Tour? An opportunistic attack off the front was still out there with 300 metres to go. But then 
Fanart launched the sprint and Fanart looks every little bit like the superstar rider he is. Green jersey on his back, ahead of Vatsek and a very promising young Paul Mikel. Fanart winning a stage for the second time. Seven stages have now been ridden of this Vuelta. On only two occasions he's been outside the top three. Congratulated by Sepp Kuss. Kuss getting all the congratulations back for having helped set up the win. This Melissa bike had it at the end of a firework filled day. Wild Fanart beating Vatsek, Mikel, Kung, and Hermons in the top five. Another stage win then, an 11th Grand Tour stage win of his career, 48th road career victory. And in the general classifications, there were changes. Tiberi moves up into the white jersey with Lipovic dropping down and a few seconds taken back in the bonuses by Primoz Roglic. It's now a 4.45 lead for Ben O'Connor, who takes the red jersey into the second weekend. Stage eight will begin in Ubeda and will head up into the mountains at Casorla. That was the scene of a victory for Esteban Chavez in 2015. It's a third category finish, a difficult welter style finish, and one that will surely again see more differences in the general classification.